Hey, Mark. So do you know that when you do showings now, people can record you inside their house. They can record what you're saying. They can record what you're doing. They can hear every comment the buyer has says, and that's totally legal without your knowledge. Yeah. You know, and it's been around for a while and, um, you know, we're just so immune to it. My clients uh, said, hey, we saw, we heard the people discussing some things about the property outside, right? That was one couple. Then we had a smart agent that came through and says, hey, don't discuss anything in the house. Write it on a note. We'll address it in the car. We'll address it at the office. So there's a few things. Is it advantageous for a seller to listen? Well, I'd do it if it was it was my house. I I, I want to hear how the showings are going along. You know, it, it it could put them in a better position if they're really interested in their talk about, yeah, we could see this going on and we love this house and we just really want it. Holy shit, there's some valuable, 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 valuable information for a seller in today's market. But then what happens if someone knows Big Brother's watching as a buyer and trashes the property? Oh, you know what? I hate this kitchen. You know what? Got to spend some money. I don't love the bathrooms. Need to paint the flooring. It may work. How would a seller take that? Okay, let me tell you. So I've had more than one client do this. They were taping without my knowledge. Right. And then they came back and would tell me comments just the same as you. So then I found out they were taping. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, the comments were not good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because when you're sure. when you're going through a house, um, you're looking for the negatives first, like, you know, and I do it, too. I mean, I want to protect my buyer. Right. No. So I'm trying to look, OK, well, this is old or that's old. And this, you know, this might need redoing. And, oh, there's a watermark over there on the trim all the way in the basement. Like mm-hmm. you, you are trying to protect your client. So you're looking for problems because you want to make sure that you don't get them into a mess. So we found, or I found that most of the comments and the information they got just pissed them off. Well, for sure. Especially if there's some some things to be done in the house, right? Like those things. And, you know, there's some really good sellers out there today that will, you know, follow the instruction. Well, you know, kind of do as they're told, do this, let's do this, bring in the stager, let's listen to them and prep the house for sale. But there's a big group of them that don't. And those are the ones that are going to be or feel real pissed off at those kind of comments. But here it is. Go change it then. Yeah, but the problem is some of the, the problem is, Mark, a lot of some of the comments that that they were getting weren't even right. Like Like they like... um, Oh God, I just, I can't even remember some of them, but they, they weren't, they weren't even correct. Like, you know, when you go into a house with somebody and they say, Oh, I got to redo this kitchen. It's going to be $50,000. And you're like, okay, you know what? No, it isn't. Okay. It's not, it's not going to be $50,000. All right. Um, there was one guy that wanted, wanted to, um, make an addition on the garage and blah, blah, blah. Oh, it's a hundred thousand dollars. They could hear him saying that it's not a hundred. Like the structure was already there. You only had to do the inside. Like, you know, not, they're not all correct in what they're saying either, which gets people frustrated, right? Because you hear them saying things and you think, well, that's, that's bullshit. And, and the other problem or the other thing I started doing, and this started really last year, last summer where I realized that we were being taped Mm -hmm. before my buyers and I walked into a house, I would tell them, especially if I saw a door cam first. So I tell the, I'd say, listen, we could be getting taped in here. Don't say anything. Yeah. And then I, I remember standing in the kitchen with my one client and the camera was pointed right at me from in, in, uh, on a kitchen table by a vase So I just looked over at the camera and I looked at her and she followed my eyeballs and she knew, yeah, we're being taped. So we made sure not to say anything. 
Well, that's the best thing, you know, like, let's face it, buyers and sellers are, it's a, it's, it's a very emotional time right now in this market, right? Like the guy saying, Oh, a hundred grand for the kitchen or 50 grand for this or whatever. They really don't have an idea of what the construction costs are. Like they're just picking a number from the hat. But if I was that seller, uh, yeah, my back's going to get turned up. Right. And if I'm seeing it by one or two people, okay, well, you know, obviously there's a problem with the kitchen. No, we're not going to jump 30 grand into it, but maybe we need to do something with our price. Obviously this is a concern. Well, so, the problem is, so, yeah, listen, the, uh, listen yeah, but the you. problem is Mark, you, if you got that comment every time, it'd be great, but you don't, you, you get don't. one person that makes a comment and the other person next, the next one comes in and says, Oh, the kitchen's great. So, but the problem is my client would call me, well, you need to call this agent. Yeah. You need to talk to this agent. Oh, so what did you want me to tell him? That you taped him and we right. heard the conversation? How am I doing that? No, oh, you're not going to. But, you know, there could be some positives, though. Sellers could react, whether if it's the same thing. Everything could be different. Everyone could see some different things. That kitchen could be great. It could be shit to the next person and the next person, next person. Then, holy cow, now we've got 20 showings in and we don't got nothing. Hmm. Maybe we need to adjust the price a bit to to maybe accommodate some of these buyers. Like there's there's different ways in how we perceive this, right? Most will get their backs turned up, bottom line, and be pissed. Well, and, and it depends. Like I said, it depends what's being said. You know, if, if it's the same thing over and over and over, okay, we can address that. Um, if it's different things, because we had where it would be, it was different things a lot of times. It wasn't the same thing over and over. So oh. it's like, you can't really address one person's opinion. Like no, older no. people, I find a lot of my older buyers, they like that old kitchen, you know, that right. light. Oh, well, newer ones don't, younger people don't. They don't want it. They don't want it. So you get an older person that comes in and, oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then and you get a younger person oh, who says, oh, I want, I, you know, this is terrible. I got to redo the whole thing. So right. it's like, it's so opinion based. It is. And I tried it. I had one client where we were getting feedback and it was all negative. Yeah. They would all bitch about things. She said, Diane, don't send it to me anymore. If it's not positive, I don't want to hear it. See, that's Because, wrong. well, the problem is, is if you know, as um, a seller, what your downfalls are, you fix already it. know what they are. And, sure. and I don't have the money to fix it. Okay. I don't have it. Do no. I need that to be in my face every half an hour when somebody sends feedback? No, I don't need to keep hearing this. I know what it is. I can't fix it. No. But if the property's priced right to reflect those things, then there's the pushback. Right. Well, what if it's a layout? This house was one, you know, the ones down on um, off Hearst, uh, the Grand Forest area, you know, in there. Where you walk in, you walk in the front door, dining room's over here, living room's on this side, stairs are in the middle, and kitchen's at the back. Yeah. There's no change in that. No change in layout. You Unless see you it in the off. pictures. You see it in the pictures, right? You know. But sometimes yeah. from the pictures, it's hard to get a lay of the land, right? It is. So you get in there and you're like, oh, this is this is too closed off. I don't like it. Well... I, I can send that to her 10 million times. She can't change it. No, 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 for sure. Right. And some of those properties with, you know, because that whole subdivision is about, geez, 25 30, years. 35. Yeah. In, in that, some are in Grand Forest and, and that, but yeah, they're all the old, you walk in, dining room, the whole the kitchen in the back, probably with 2000 square foot, two story. They're all the same. They're all the same. Right. And they're all dated. Like, you know what I mean? But, you know, there's ways to navigate that where buyers and sellers can, you know, I think it could work to both parties in the end. Well, my thing is though, oh, yes. I felt when I realized it, that it was happening to me, I felt like my privacy was being um, invaded because I had a client. Welcome to the new world. That I was talking to that I was being taped, which without my knowledge, I had no knowledge that I was being taped. I could have been talking about who knows what 
Yeah. I mean, they, you, you, you have clients that you've had for years and years and years. Okay. Right. You're friends with them. Right. So you can be talking someone... about your sex life. How do they, how do you, you know what I'm saying? I know. Or I'm having an affair. Yeah. Oh my God. You should have seen that. Whatever. Yeah. It can be scary. <laughs> and what <laughs> happens if, what happens if there's name dropping and that person goes, Holy shit, I know who they're talking about. And and this happens all the time. This is a small world where we hear stories and go, I know that person. You do? <laughs> oh, that could be. I had a client that's <laughs> wife had an affair with an agent in town, a well-known one. And I yeah. met him and he didn't tell me right away. But eventually he was like, yeah, well, my wife and I split up because she had an affair with a real estate agent. Wow. Could you, but could you imagine if we were in that house, if it was that brokerage and he, he said it out loud? Yeah, could happen. It, it, of course it can. So this is what my problem is. My problem is not every conversation, especially if you have clients that you've known for a really, really long time, like 10, 15 years, we're talking about everything. She's yeah. telling me about her hemorrhoids, like, holy shit. And these, and these people are taping us. Hey, give it a give a like, give a share, uh, give a follow if you want to hear more information on Big Brother because it's pretty wild. And listen, if you're going to do showings, shut your mouth, talk yeah. outside. Yeah, that that's the best, right? Or or play the other card and cut the property up and make the seller feel like shit. <laughs> but don't divulge personal information and and drop names in that because or talk about your budget. Well, we can only go to seven fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I would only give them seven hundred. Like, yeah. never. Don't talk price. Don't talk the nothing. Just go in there with a straight face. Great. Talk about it. Keep your mouth shut. In most cases, because exactly. It could turn. It could turn pretty wild. <laughs> it could. Right. Yeah. Like, okay, I think we're done with Big Brother. Okay. Covered Big Brother and got the point across pretty good. Exactly. Okay, Thanks. we'll talk yeah. soon. Bye.